before we get into the video, I have four disclaimers. Number one, this video is not supposed to be an actual summary. It is satire and only meant for comedy. So if you actually want to learn about the Wings of Fire villains, please go check the wiki or better yet, read the books. Number two, yes, I have put Darkstalker as a villain. I know some people say that he's not a villain and will get mad at me for putting him in. And some people say that he is and will get mad at me if I don't. I legitimately can't win here, guys, so please be nice to me. Number three, spoilers ahead for pretty much the entire series. Don't say I didn't warn you. There are a couple characters that are considered antagonists, but I don't consider them main villains. An example of this would be Marseer or Crocodile, so they won't be put in this video. So if you don't see someone here, it's not because I forgot, it's because I don't consider them mainstream villains to the series. With that said, let's go. Hello men's, fems, and thems. What is your favorite thing about Wings of Fire? Is it the tiny details? The stunning cover art? The various tribes and LGBTQ plus representation? The fandom starting wars over their favorite ships? Or maybe it's even the villains. It probably isn't, but we're going to explore them anyway. Queen Scarlet is usually the fan favorite, and it's not that hard to see why. With a beautifully mel melted face, a personality that could make even the most dedicated nice guy cry with how much she tries to seem like the victim, and a tendency to watch from the sidelines and make everyone else do her dirty work, what's not to like? She appeared in book one first to threaten and endanger our five little quirky protagonists, and then disappeared again until book three when she decides to use a magical rock to haunt the rainforest dragon who melted her face like ice cream on a hot day. She pops back into book five in chains, and then finally in book nine, where she makes her last appearance. Her fascination with the world thrilling throughout the entire series is a little bit worrying, considering she says it pretty much every time someone dies. Long live Queen Scarlet, say her fans, shoving the fact that she imprisoned and killed several dragons, forced countless more to fight in death in a hor horrific arena, and hunted down and tried to kill every innocent dragon that stood in her way under the rug. Of course, who could forget the Sandwing Sisters? Me, actually, because I left them off the list in the first draft, but let's not worry about that. <laughs> Blaze, the wonderfully stupid princess stereotype, except she's not obsessed with finding a prince. She just wants a bunch of money and jewelry. She has an IQ of negative six, and she uses it wisely, along with her jewelry expertise, to suggest that Queen Glacier get a crown with sapphires on it when she's supposed to be planning how to capture the five baby dragons who are currently busy jumping from kingdom to kingdom getting captured. Burn is the bodybuilder princess who don't need no man and probably flips the table whenever she loses at chess. She spent years gaining lots of muscle at the gym so that she can beat everyone who stands in her way, along with anyone who sits in her way, or, you know, anyone who kind of just breathes in her direction. She's definitely smarter than Blaze, but everyone's smarter than Blaze, so it isn't much of an accomplishment. She wears her war-loving badge with pride and seems to have a weird fetish for killing weird dragons and putting them in her psychopathic tower. Unfortunately, she does seem to be allergic to snakes, because one of them touched her once and she keeled over. Blister is the smartest one. She always beat the other kids at spelling beads in school and got so many gold stars from the teacher that she could suffocate someone with them. She probably would, too, because not only is she smart, but she's evil and likes to manipulate her friends into killing people she doesn't like. Everyone wondered where the Sandwing treasure went after Queen Oasis died. Well, it was her. She stole it, and then she used that money to go and pay a bunch of other people to do her work for her. On second thought, yelling at other people to do something they could very easily do themselves seems to be a common thing for villains. None of them are going to be the ones to build that IKEA furniture. Don't worry if you didn't get that joke. It I didn't expect it to be funny. Blister met her unfortunate end because she touched a jewel and looked at it funny, so it made her explode. Darkstalker is the one thing that I'm always amused by, to be honest. Mostly just because I think Tui wrote herself into a corner making the second arc. She made the most OP dragon known to the series as a hybrid, mind-reading, future-telling animus who also happens to be extremely intelligent. That seems cool in theory, but what happens when you have to defeat this guy? A strawberry. That, that's what happens, it's a strawberry. But enough of writers thinking of the weirdest solutions to overthrow a villain. Let's talk about what happens when you make such a powerful character and then add good intentions. Good answer, you get a huge fan base who will defend that character to the end despite the fact that he enchanted his own girlfriend, 
because he wasn't doing what he wanted and enchanted his father to disembowel himself. And because a darky boy didn't listen to literally everyone who was trying to help him, he went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and didn't press F in the chat for his breath mint dad. Of course, this wouldn't be a villain summary without the ultimate villain, Queen Wasp, joining the fray. This is the one character I'm pretty sure no one can defend and still have a valid argument. Please don't prove me wrong in the comments, let me have this. Now, she's never actually appeared in the books in person, so we don't really have an idea of what her personality is, besides what she's shown through her subjects when they're mind-controlled. But from what I can tell, she's an evil dictator who's convinced the little butterfly dragons that it's totally fine to let the people abuse you and call you names. She's currently trying to take over the continent as of book 13, which is the latest book out as I'm recording this, and has several palaces, or hives as they're called, which were built not only to house her hivewing subjects, but were also made despite the leafwings. The most petty thing ever. I would have liked to be there when the angry danger foliage found out. It did seem to work though, because now there are no trees left on the continent other than in the poison jungle. And since Arc 3 isn't finished, we don't really know what quite will happen to Queen Wasp, but I'm certain she'll lose because she's a bad guy. That's how it works everywhere, except in my fanfictions, because I like to kill off everyone you love. <laughs> I'm not joking. Read literally anything, and it will probably have a bad ending. That is pretty much it for today's video. It was a little bit chaotic, but I enjoyed writing it. So, hope you all enjoyed, and ultimate out.